Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to start at 15 seconds? No, because I haven't even opened GarageBand. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about that. Thing. Sammy. Sammy. I just realized that my output's different. Hold on. Preferences. Audio. Output. Sure. Okie dokie, Artie Chokey. Hold on. I think this will be 146. Test, 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 test. Hello. Okay. Damn, this is a good fucking microphone. I kind of just want to like let you have your microphone and then just keep this one. I mean, you should keep that one. That's a better microphone. Like to to talk in, right? Yeah. I mean, what else are you gonna do with the microphone? Of course, you're gonna talk into it. No, I mean like we were gonna have the exact same microphone, so our audio sounded the same. But I just kind of want to use this. Does it one. matter though? No. They're gonna yours already already sounds good. I mean. Yeah. I don't think it'll matter. Okay, I'm ready. All right, how about uh, 45 seconds after? Okay. It's very soon. It's very soon. Let's see what we got. Really? Pew. Oh, okay, hi. Hi. We're live. Live. <coughs> live. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Ryan. Hi, Becca. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Not bad at all. Do you know what I love is that we actually don't ask how we're doing before we start the podcast. So it's like genuine. No, you know? it's it's yeah. I I basically answered like I do with all my customers this weekend. Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. How did your sale go? It was good. I uh I expected more, but I probably shouldn't have because last year the weather was absolutely perfect and oh, yeah. we didn't have a show the previous year. So expecting sales to match 2021 is probably not realistic. I think I what had a were killer sales year in 2021? last year. We talked about it on here. I want to say 4,000, but I think it was more. Oh, yes. I remember. No, it was 4,000 because it was on my birthday. I it remember was that. Ridiculous. Yeah, it was on my birthday, and you called me and was like, and I was like in and out of reception driving in the middle of nowhere. And you were like, I made $4,000. And I was like, what? Are you celebrating? And you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, we had tacos. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was basically like 4000 last year. And you know what? We had tacos after the show this year, too. As you should. Yeah, so it was, because uh, it was funny. We went to the show, and then after, went to the same restaurant. We went to the same like white boy taco place mm -hmm. in Newport, and then we saw you last year. We saw the Derby run, but I think they started it later this year than they did last year. Could you please explain what the Derby run is to everybody that's not from Kentucky? The Kentucky Derby, which is the most popular horse race in America, that happens so wait, the first Saturday of every May. Oh, I see. I didn't know that it was every. I didn't realize that this this it's was the first. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's the first Saturday of every May. And so it's you watched it on the television? The... Yeah, but we got back home and watched it. Or I got back home and watched it because it didn't start till okay. almost 7. Normally, it's, I think normally post is about 6.20. Who won? Um, Rich Strike, which it was an 80 to 1 shot. It was a very long shot horse. So that means the odds of them winning, they would win 1 out of 80 races. No shit. And then it paid out a lot. <gasps> really? Yes. I don't really understand the, horse betting. The only, the, the only like. The favorite was five to one. Okay. So okay, if you put okay. two dollars to win on a five to one horse, you would win two ten, times five, so you'd win ten dollars. But if you put two dollars on an eighty to one, you'd win one hundred and sixty dollars. Wow. Yes. It Do you was think very anybody exciting. did put money on that horse? What? What's that? 
How many people do you think put money on that horse? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure a lot did because he was the worst odds, I think. So some of those you're just like, he's literally the underdog. Oh, yes. He is the most underdog. (gasps) Wow. And he wasn't even scheduled to race until the morning of. There was a late scratch. So there was a horse for some reason that got removed from the lineup the day of. And then they had this horse take its place. Normally they have 20 horses run mm-hmm. um, for the Derby and which I think is the most that they ever run in a race. Okay. I don't even think the the following races that they have as part of the Triple Crown, which is the the Derby, the Preakness and the Belmont Stakes, Preakness Stakes and the Belmont Stakes. Those are the three of the Triple Crown races. Um, usually the next race has like 12 horses and then the, the Belmont it's the last one I think mm-hmm. is like six or eight horses normally. So oh. like 20 horses is a lot. So they ended up having to scratch the day of, and then he jumped in there. So he was actually like numbered as the 21 horse, which is not common because normally it's only 20. So it was like a late run. If you just watch the last like 30 seconds of it, you could see how he like kind of comes up at the very last minute. Mm-hmm. And so and the two out in front were the two favorites that were in the very front leading up to the the finish line. And then he just came in there and, and won, and I was like, oh, wow. So that was pretty exciting. That is really exciting. Um, I never grew up. I've never been to a horse race, which I kind of want to go. You should go, also, We should go sometime. It's pretty fun. Yeah, you, I'd and like it's to. it's cheap. Like, you can go in the... Tickets or uh, like tickets to get in that in the building are like two bucks or five bucks or something. It's because oh, you're nice. spend money on betting. So I mean, you could just, but Not it's a bet. good day out. It's oh, but we outside. will bet. We will yeah. bet. Obviously. I'm a pretty conservative better. I don't put a lot of money, but I mean, I'll spend like a hundred bucks for the day or something maybe. Oh wow, I was thinking ten, but you know that's fine. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, normally you bet. Normally at a minimum, you would bet like two dollars a race. You'd bet like two dollars to win on horse X. Okay. And then you hope he wins or whatever. Yeah. And then if he does, you get whatever payout was based on his odds. Yeah. Or you lose and then you move on to the next race. And the races are normally about 12 to 13 races in a day. Yeah. Wow. And there's about, I think about 40 minutes minutes between races. Oof. No, Um, they don't. The same horses don't run all the races. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, no horse runs more than once a day. So okay, I um. But it's cool because they they like change like some races have like ten horses, some races have like six horses. Sometimes they okay. run on the dirt, sometimes they run on the turf, which is the the grass, and uh, they run different lengths. Like sometimes they run a really long, mm. a really long race, and sometimes they run a really short race. And interesting. Ow, ow, ow. Um, I think I need to get those ear headphones that like go over your ear. Like I've got, yeah, the yeah. on-ear headphones are a little bit painful for me. Yeah. Anyway. Unless they just get too hot. Um, There was a dog track in Ooh, the town Greyhound. That, I, that I grew up in. And it actually went out of business by the time that we would have considered going to a dog race. But I think that everybody kind of knows that dog races are just, like, bad. Because they, like, treat the dogs really, really badly. And it just so, doesn't seem like it's as enjoyable one of those yeah the the memories i have of the dog race the dog track is that my mom took me out there when i was learning how to drive and um me and my mom had a particularly interesting relationship when i was learning how to drive because i'm she's kind of like um we're both kind of hotheads with each other so uh so one especially time, while you're driving <laughs> especially while you're driving so when so we're like on the dog track parking lot which was the biggest parking lot that we could find. And she, she right. fucking like. God, what did she do? She either turned off the car or moved the shifter into like neutral or something. I can't remember. And I was so pissed. And she was like, well, what While are you going to do? you driving? Oh, my yes. gosh. She's like, well, what are you going to do? What happens if that happens? And I was like, it's not going to fucking happen. And guess what? mom it's never happened um 
Unless you're like also, playing with your with a stick shift or something for some reason. Like sometimes I'll like it was click not the little a button shift. on there. I wasn't not allowed. the stick shift, but I'll just like oh, yeah. click the little button on the shifter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't allowed to drive a stick shift when I was growing up because my dad was like, "You're too ADHD, and you're not gonna be able to handle it." And I've never like, driven I've... a stick shift. I don't know how to drive one. I would love to learn. I know how to. I know how to drive stick, but um, I don't think I would drive well. But mm-hmm. I learned on a nineteen like ninety two Mustang up the hills of California, and that oh, was wow. hard. Um, so well, like, it'd be, it'd be a fun like challenge. Yeah, my best friend Teresa, who lives out here, she has always driven a stick shift. She still has one. So, hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, stick shifts are going to be a thing of the past here. I would say give it like, I don't know, 15 years or so. I mean, dude, engines are going to be a thing of the past. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> gasoline is going to be a thing of the past for vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah the derby happened i was i we've had the some oh so i never talked about how much i sold but yeah it's been on derby day the last five years or so that i've been selling Mm -hmm. at the show so i missed the derby festivities and parties and stuff growing up in louisville which is actually where it's held it's just kind of kind of a thing thing. so you go to like friends houses and do the whole derby party and you you do the little bets in the pools of putting money up and seeing it who win and that's cool yeah and uh so i ended up selling about 2600 bucks at the show which was good nice was good for a one-day show that's pretty uh, damn good for a one-day show yeah the weather wasn't amazing it was kind of cool like probably 50s or something okay it's a little windy and stuff so you know, um, yeah. wasn't sunny, but it wasn't raining. It was it rained a lot the couple days before, which we were like really fingers crossed, hoping that it was not going to affect the day of the show. But um, being the day before Mother's Day, consistent show that's always there. Like people know to come back to this show because it's the only yeah. like all Potter show that's in Cincinnati, I think. Yeah. That's that big. So there was about 50 artists, 50 clay artists there. Nice. So whole lot of talent. Um, and I was on the planning committee, so it was quite the lead up to it that week of so much stuff going on. I'm glad that's in the past. I'm glad it's over. Yeah, I but, bet. But yeah, I was like, I like hit a wall after the show. We did the, you know, dinner and then kind of relaxed a little bit. And then we went to Louisville yesterday for Mother's Day. Mother's Day. And yeah. my mom's birthday is actually today. Um which which Deech a happy birthday? Everybody. I already did. You did? Okay. Oh, but happy birthday! I wasn't Deech. saying to you, but oh, uh, I was like, I already did. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we went to Louisville for Mother's Day and did a little picnic out in the Bernheim Forest, which was pretty cool. Did you see see some of my photos from there? Yeah, there's like trolls and stuff. Yeah, it was pretty neat. Um, yeah, so it's very it's a very big park and pretty scenic and stuff. There's a lot of families out there. It was a great day to be out. That's cool. Today was amazing too. So oh I was gosh, like, today was wonderful. Working on the patio from the jelly couch on the back patio while I was on my computer. So it was pretty great. Yeah. And, everybody uh, went outside for lunch today and we were like, we don't want to go back in. <laughs> do you all have like a picnic table or something to sit at when you go out? No, we have a blanket and um, we got like a blanket from Target. And what's great is that they accidentally sent us two. So like, um, oh, that's great. Mackenzie bought one. It has fruits all over it and it's like a picnic blanket. And then, yeah. And so they actually sent us two. So we have two that we can like sit out on. And there's like a really nice grassy knoll right behind the, the, um, mm-hmm. the studio. So that's nice. But was Somebody there a shooter there? It. Was there a shooter huh? on the grassy knoll or? Yes. I did lose my paper plate today because it was so windy and it, and it flipped my pizza over and then the paper plate flew away and we were like, oh, bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I was like, we were like, should we race after it? And then Mackenzie goes, you know, it's going to go away once you get up. It's just going to fly away and you're going to be like trying to chase a stupid fucking paper. Plate. As you're like bending over, like trying to catch the thing and then you're like jump, like stand up a little bit to move a little bit further. And then keep exactly. It's like there's no way. So we didn't even try. Um, don't come at me. Um, but 
I was going to say that I did a show this weekend, too. Yeah, well, how was that? What was the show? It was the um, Indiana Studio Clay Crawl. So they did it for Mother's Day. And I guess um, somebody mentioned this, and I was like, oh, I guess it is kind of like that. Um, it's not really like the Michiana Pottery Tour, but it is, you know. Um, so all the prominent studios in Indiana or Indianapolis, um, like got together and they all did like demos and stuff. And since we're like not organized, I just did demos of the plates that I was supposed to throw on Friday. And, um, <laughs> Love it. I saw you making those and I was like, did Becca like intentionally demo these? <laughs> I was about no. to comment and be like, Oh, it looks like you got some extra work done, huh? Yeah. I was like, I was going to make them on Friday and, and they're the slab plate. So actually it ended up being perfect because it's something that most people haven't even seen um, throwing a plate from a slab. So yeah, that worked out well. And, um, and then I sold a fair amount. I think I sold about probably about 900 to a thousand dollars, but then I accidentally lost a hundred dollars. So we'll say $800. Does that mean somebody like stole a piece or what? No. <laughs> Misplaced a piece? You broke a no. piece? You no. You just lost cash? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so I was like packing up my shit and then Rebecca runs over and she picks up the space lemon cup, which was the black cup with the yellow um, balls and then the um, yellow dots and then the white outline. Mm -hmm. And then she hands me $100 and I was like, don't pay for this. Just take it. Like. It's fine. And she's like, no, take the money. And I was like, here, take your money back. And I like waved it at her. And then I don't know what I did with it. I must have put it in my pocket. And I, she said that I really manifested this correctly. So I like must have put it in my pocket. And then I put my phone in my pocket. And I must have pulled out my phone oh. and the $100 bill slipped out. And so I don't think I did it outside. So we think that the $100 bill is somewhere either in my stuff or Graves Co. Pottery. <laughs> oh, is this a little Easter egg hunt for a $100 yeah. bill? Yeah, so we don't know for sure. I checked outside last night, like outside the pottery studio. I went there pretty late. There was another car where I was parked. But I don't think I took my phone out while I was walking to my car. So, um, yeah, so there's a hundred dollar bill somewhere. Somebody may have found it and gotten a little richer. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, not the first time I've lost a bill <laughs> of yeah. money. It is the most expensive bill that I've lost. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I guess it's just a hundred dollars. I did fine. that semi recently at Richard and I were at a comedy club waiting in the lobby area mm -hmm. and they give us the little rip tickets or whatever. Yeah. And I put it in the same pocket as my phone and then I take it out and it's time to go in and it, we're like searching for these tickets and I couldn't find them. And it, don't put stuff in the same pocket as your phone. <laughs> yeah. We found that, them on the floor, but we were looking all that's around. That's good. Though, but we found Yeah. Them. I mean, like giving me anything when I'm not doing the thing that like, like if I was standing near my pottery selling and somebody handed me a hundred dollar bill it would have gone in the correct place. But when it's like random, you know, it's just shove it in my pocket and then I won't remember the next 10 minutes of what happened. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you need to like put it in your shirt or something. I should have put it in my bra. Yeah, I should have, but, um, such is life. So, so yeah. So I think that technically I made a thousand dollars, but I went away with 900. So okay. well, that's great. Did that make, uh, did you plan to be doing this show? Kinda, yeah. Okay, um, that's good. That's why I was so happy, like not even upset that I did really, really bad at that show last okay. week. Yeah, I was gonna wonder or two if weeks it kind of balanced out, you know? Yeah, because I was like, uh, I have the studio clay crawl. I don't have to make anything. This is nice. Well, so, you sold more of your stuff. Did you sell some more fancy stuff versus? I the... did. Nice. Yeah, I did. It was funny though because I had the numbers on the bottom, you know, like, like this was cup number twenty-seven. Yeah. yeah, and somebody like set one down, and I was like, "That'll be a hundred dollars." And he was like, "Oh my god, I thought that it was twenty-seven dollars." And I was like, "Oh yeah, no." <laughs> <laughs> did you still buy it? He bought a fifty-dollar cup. 
that oh, was okay. very similar to it. And I was like, I totally understand. Like, I would have been like, fuck yeah, twenty seven dollars, yeah. <laughs> but so he got like a mini cup. Mm hmm. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, but it was good. We found a really good pizza place. That was nice. Um, Great. Yeah. I'll have to get some pizza when you're out here the next time. Well, I guess you're kind of used to really good pizza. but Pizza, um, pizza. Pizza, pizza. Is it like yeah. wood-fired pizza? No, it was just regular pizza, but it was good. It was like the regular place that we go to didn't open until 4, and then we found, and then like none of the other pizza places were answering their phones. And we found one in the garage, that place that you guys went to. Mm-hmm. Um, that cafeteria place. So yeah, it was pretty good. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll so, try that. shall we move on to our questions? Yes, we should. We're about twenty minutes in. Wow, that flew. I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. oh, Oh wait, I do have one more thing. All right. What do we got? I have one more thing. Okay, so me and my coworkers have been trying to figure out what I'm going to do when my hands give out because they're going to give out sometime, you know, and I won't be able to do pottery. And so um, they this is what they came up with, and I think that you'll enjoy this. Um, they came up with a bagel bar. Um, <laughs> where you get bagels, like you don't, I don't necessarily make the bagels, but if I did, that'd be really cool. But, um, you have bagels and then you can put whatever you want on the bagels. So like you can make a sandwich or you can put peanut butter on it or you can put avocado or whatever. And yeah, so that's the Beckles bagel bar is, um, that's triple B the triple B. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll call it the triple B. Um, that's the, first option the second option is a little bit more realistic in the sense that i've already done it um and the the second option that i came up with is uh i should probably just do paint your own pottery again like your own pottery i mean hey you can load a kiln you can tell people how to do stuff exactly and it's really a no-fail system i mean i mean i don't know anybody that's lost money on paint your pottery if they're in the right location you know I don't there's think some there's that any... close up the street for me, but I don't know why they close. I'm guessing they just don't get enough foot track and, and don't market themselves enough to get yeah. people in the door. Yeah, I mean, like, if I, I don't know any of them in Indianapolis. There's tons of kids in Indianapolis. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So, that's those are my two backup plans as of now. Okay. As of now. Hey, I mean, paint your own pottery. You already know the connections of where to get the pots. Yeah. Unless... And if you get Bisquare from Rebecca, which would be cool. Oh, yeah, you could. And I already have the kiln. Yep. So. Yep. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the backup plan. And I think I'm probably going to stop doing pottery for a little bit on the side. Uh, for a little bit. Just because my hands hurt, so. Okay. You have enough stock for the Backyard Craft Show, right? Here in a few weeks? Oh, yeah, yeah. Plenty, plenty. And um, I'll probably do, like, one more round of shitty cups, but I don't think I'll even need those. Um, And, yeah. Oh, I did get offered a job, though. Uh, Part-time screen printer. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah, some lady named Rebecca. (laughs) (laughs) You just can't get away from Rebecca's, can you? (laughs) Some lady named Rebecca. It was Destin. You have to work for her. You can't not work for Rebecca. She owns a screen printing company and they screen print on metal. They do like industrial medicine, medical machines and stuff. On metal. Okay. Yeah. So you're not physically pushing the stuff through the screen. You're just operating a machine that does the screen printing. No, you do physically push it through the screen, but you do it onto metal. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Does that mean you're like doing... gonna take it, or you're just thinking about it, or I'm just thinking not... about it? But like, she was watching me do the do the demo, and she's like, "Well, if you ever need a part time job, here's my phone number." <laughs> I was like, "Great, <laughs> thanks," but I could do it before work. <laughs> <laughs> it might be I feel fun like screen printing learn. would be fun. Yeah, it might be fun to learn. Like, there's a uh, there's an apparel company in Lexington that does shop local Kentucky's the name. I mean, I wear their stuff all the time, but. I have their yeah. shirts and stuff, but they screen print everything, but they have like a big machine. They yeah. just, they like ink it up, but it's, you know, it's a big machine that can do up to like eight shirts at a time. And yeah, it like turns and all that shit. It's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. That's cool. 
Yep. Like, okay, now we can go on to our questions. Yes. All right. So first question comes from Linderman Pottery. This is kind of a funny one. I need to catch up on my this. episodes, but I really want to know whether you two are Miracle Whip or Mayonnaise people. There is a wrong answer. I'm ready. Ryan? I'm Mayonnaise. I don't even know that I've ever had Miracle Whip. <laughs> but... I also don't really eat mayonnaise unless I'm going to a place and they have subs or something and there's mayonnaise on it. Like I'll eat that or like on a burger or something, but I don't intentionally keep mayonnaise at the house. The only thing I use it for at the house is if I'm making tuna out of a can and I put mayonnaise with it. I didn't realize we were so um, similar in this regard. I hate mayonnaise. <laughs> I yeah. hate mayonnaise and I hate Miracle Whip. Like I, and also I realize that I say it incorrectly. Um, but mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Is you say mayonnaise. Mean? I say mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Yeah, I say mayonnaise. Oh, anyway, yeah. oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. No, the only reason I have mayonnaise in my fridge is to make cilantro lime dressing. So I'm more of a hot sauce person. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like, well, hey, butter. just mix the two. Like what, like what I eat with my sandwiches, spicy mayonnaise. Yeah, spicy mayo is good. Um, the so one. So I guess what I do, do eat, eat mayonnaise, but that's that's the boar's head. I don't heads. think that's no. It is spicy that's mayo. Like I know, but it's more of an aioli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aioli's the but, shit. Yeah, and aioli is mayo, but it's it's actually just like, but it's like flavored. Like, I'll okay. I have been broadening my horizons. Like, if somebody gave me a sandwich with mayo on it, I would probably eat it. I wouldn't enjoy it, but um, you're not gonna be rude and take it off. Like, no, I'd even eat a sandwich with mustard, and I hate mustard. Oh, hate mustard. Yeah. Anyway, um, when you go to a shop and you order a sandwich, do you? Get mayonnaise dry. or dry? Dry. Dry butter or ranch. Um, okay. Which is mayo, I suppose. But Ranch is mayo? No, it's not. It's made with mayo. Is it? Yeah. Mayo and milk. I don't know. Is that right? Yeah. That doesn't yeah. sound right. Yep. All right, whatever. I don't have any <laughs> judgment on here. I don't have anything to just. just I don't know the you right You know what's word, funny but... is that one of my favorite movies growing up was Undercover Brother. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> have you seen it? Yes, but it's been forever. <laughs> Undercover Brother. Uh, and. Um... <laughs> And my favorite part of the movie, because I hated mayonnaise so much when I was growing up, was that he had hot sauce in his watch that when he had to put mayonnaise on the bread because, like, he was dating this white chick and white people always love mayonnaise, like, <laughs> he could squirt hot sauce on the mayonnaise. From his watch? <laughs> it was his watch. <laughs> hey, spicy mayonnaise. Spicy mayonnaise. I died. I was like, that's me. I hate mayonnaise. I need hot sauce in my watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Great movie. That's great. I don't and the funny thing is Rachel actually got um she accidentally got Miracle Whip, but mm -hmm. it was Kroger brand, so it was like creamy whip or something. She thought it was mayo. She got a bottle and then uh, we were getting ready for the party and she was trying to get some mayo. She didn't know that that was in there and she got another bottle, but she got creamy whip again. <laughs> so she got two <laughs> bottles of Miracle Whip generic and we we're and Rachel was like, I'm not going to eat this. So like my parents took one of them home and does Rachel eat mayonnaise? No, no. she doesn't like it either. She got it because we were just using it for sandwiches or whatever. If he, we have it yeah. on the side for a condiment if people wanted it. But Did you tell people it was Miracle Whip? No, I mean, you just leave the bottle out and people can use it if they want. You, oh, can, tell it's, you can tell it's Miracle Whip. I mean, it says Creamy Whip on it. I know, but you could have put it in a bowl and nobody would have ever known. That's like... No, no, no. What's the point of doing that? You just put the bottle out there. We're not fancy that you just put a bowl of whip yeah. <laughs> 
a bowl. That's like squeezing mustard into a bowl and like saying, "All right, get here's a knife. Spread it yourself. No, just open the fucking bottle and squeeze it on there." The point is, if you didn't want people to like judge you on having Miracle Whip, you could have put it in a bowl and nobody would have known the difference. You no, know, but it makes for a funny story. <laughs> That's true. Um, you know, there was a bartender I had once, and she was like, "Nobody knows the difference between Bud Light and um, Coors Light." She's like, "Nobody does." <laughs> People ask for Coors Light all the time, and I give them Bud Light. They don't fucking know. <laughs> Like on draft or something, you're like yeah, yeah, and um and uh Gino's the the bar next to where I used to uh, have a store, uh they had Pepsi products and in the back they just put a Coke, like <laughs> thing, but it was all Pepsi products. I like, would fucking know the difference. There's no way I'm gonna taste that and be like, that's a Coke. No, I was like, that's so fucking brilliant. Like, drunk people can't tell the difference. That was like a drunk bar, though. You know, like some bars you go in and you just have like one drink. Yeah. This is the bar you go in that you're already drunk from the day and then you keep on having drinks. Okay. Yeah. Where everybody knows your name. <laughs> that kind of bar. Okay. Like Cheers. <laughs> Good old. Yeah, basically. Uh... <laughs> basically. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. And I got a okay. feeling Andrew's uh, wrong answer was Miracle Whip, but. We could be wrong, though. I don't know. I mean, my grandpa had Miracle Whip, and he used it since I was a kid. And he still uses it. That's his go-to. He would get, like, the big jugs of it, like the like a peanut butter size container of it. What is it called when it's, like, um... Like, is... I wonder if Miracle Whip is, like, just for the Midwest, or, like, if there's, like, geographical, like... <laughs> um... I don't know. My mom was saying it's sweeter. The mayonnaise. Yeah, miracle Whip. It's um. Huh. Here in Germany. It's a oh my god! It's a less expensive alternative to mayonnaise. That's interesting. That's, yeah, that's so, why he grew up. On so it. it's that's the margarine of up. it's the margarine of mayonnaise. Yeah. So, um, huh. It premiered at the, at the Century of Progress World Fair in Chicago in 1933. Uh, soon mm. became a success as a condiment. Oh, gross. Gross, gross, gross. For fruits, vegetables, and salads. Ew. Who is, he, who is putting Miracle Whip on fruit? That's uh, gross. <laughs> you know what I think is gross with fruit that I just can't see? Like cottage cheese? Oh, I don't eat cottage cheese. It but... looks it just looks gross. I don't get how people have, I don't know. I don't even know that I've tried it. I think I've tried it once, but the chunkiness <laughs> would, of it just I would try ugh. cottage cheese if somebody handed it to me, but I'm not gonna buy it at a grocery store. Because like I don't know if I'm gonna like it and what's the point. Like if you're at a party and there's some cottage cheese in a bowl next to some fruit, are you gonna like get a little bit? That's never happened to me, so I don't know. <laughs> I've never been to a party with cottage, <laughs> cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of its introductory period, Miracle Whip was outselling all mayonnaise brands. According to Kraft archivist Becky... Becky, um, <laughs> Kraft developed the product in-house using a patented emulsifying machine invented by Charles Chapman Ooh. to create a product that blended mayonnaise and less expensive salad dressing, sometimes called boiled dressing, and salad oh dressing gosh. spread. The machine dubbed Miracle Whip by Chapman ensured that the ingredients, including more than 20 spices, were thoroughly blended. Wow. 20 spices. Like, what? Why? Mayonnaise is just oil and, and eggs and mustard. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, uh. ew. Okay, well, now if you eat Miracle Whip after this, um, it's by your own doing. You already know. Now you know. Um, wow. Now you know it's the margarine of, of mayonnaise. 
Yeah, there's it's certain the places that have some good, uh, some good mayo though. I always like the Potbelly Subs place mayo. That's pretty good. Really? I think it's that like, the it's like thinner. It's not mm. real gloopy. I think that I really stopped eating, like really eating mayo. Like I hated mayo so much as a kid that, like, whenever I'd make the ranch dressing, if the mayo touched me, I would freak out and like wash my hands. Like the yeah, it's not I, like a lick it off thing. It's like a Ew. Ew. <laughs> it, was, it? it was that, yeah. So, like, it was, like, just a textural thing. But also, um, you know, we stored most of our um, stuff in the garage and the mayo in the summer separated. Uh, mm. And that really just sealed the deal. That one. Ugh. Yeah. It's like there's some condiments or some things that you scoop out with, like, a knife that mm-hmm. when you clean it, you could, like, lick it off like peanut butter. I'll, like, yeah. lick off a knife of peanut butter. I'm not going to lick off a knife from, like, spreading mayo. It's got to be with it, something. Like, it, was be with so, it was so bad that if I did get it on my finger, I would, like, freak out and have to wash it immediately. Mm-hmm. I'm better yeah. now. I'm better but I love now. spicy mayo. But that's, like you said, it's more like an aioli or something. Which is essentially just flavored mayo. But, yes, flavored mayo, fine. Totally fine. Don't yeah. know why. Totally fine, though. Kind of like flavored whiskey. Give me yeah. some of that. Don't give me regular whiskey. I don't want that. Exactly. Okay, continuing on um, to pottery-related <laughs> items. <laughs> um, now that we're 34 minutes in. Uh, uh, hi, Ryan and Becca. Do you know if there is any science or reasoning behind having each coat of glaze dry completely between layers? I understand each layer should be applied when the shine is gone but to have it dry completely so that it's not even cold takes a very long time if i'm in a rush i will use my heat gun between layers to speed up the process but i'm not sure if this is negatively affecting my results love to hear your input um becca you are my spirit animal who's that for him oh heart seraphina ceramics nice you got a lot of uh Becca spirit animal comments out there. This is like the fourth or fifth one that I've seen. I don't want to talk about it. I know how you're reluctant to say that at the end, (laughs) but it's it's like the fourth or fifth time I've seen that. (laughs) So there there must be something to it. Well, I'm not an animal. (laughs) You know, I, I mean, look about three questions down from this one. The other one starts with two things. You want to see it? <laughs> no, Number I saw one, it. <laughs> Becca is my spirit animal. I okay. I just like to make something clear. I'm not an animal. Um, <laughs> and I think at there's least some, not like, now. Negative connotation with saying that phrase nowadays. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, well, it, there's something you're not supposed to say that, but I don't really know. But it's fine. I mean, like I understand why people. Um, they it's an indigenous saying like yeah. spirit animal is very it's like you're um, saying we're kindred spirits or something is basically what it's what yeah it's to say. um yeah spirit two animal peas in the pod. is yeah two pe- yeah spirit animal is a uh, um a very sacred saying um to the indigenous people so yeah so you know what but yeah anyway moving on um so so glaze is drying between layers <laughs> yes. <laughs> What do you so think? we didn't do any scientific research beforehand, so I don't know that you're going to get the sciency stuff that you're looking that. for, but yeah. we can talk about what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I don't know their stuff if it matters if they paint glaze on versus dipping it, but ah. yeah. Do you have experience with painting it on besides dipping it? Um, painting it on does dry a lot quicker. So, like, if you're going to paint on, like, stroke and coat or something like that, it definitely dries a lot quicker. Is that um, just because of the the way it's mixed is actually different and it's meant to dry quicker? Because no, of it's the... just because you're slow. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, yeah. Because of the, the amount of time it would take you to get back to that um, part of the pot again. It looks like she likely dips her pots. Well, I don't know. 
Mm, I think that is painted. Painted on? Okay. She's got mm. similar techniques to a few other people that I've seen. So, actually, I think a lot of those people that have that similar. She's painting. Drippiness is painting. She's painting with Amico. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Um, good. Okay, good. This is good. Um, actually, it's really good that we looked at her page because that kind of helps. So, what do you think? I mean, I think you should. I would definitely not do the heat gun. I would just work in batches. Like, for me, I would go through. I hate painting glaze on, but if I had to, I would work through, like, maybe figure out what the right number is. Maybe five of them is a good number. You know, Mm -hmm. do a whole layer on five pots all the way around. And then get back, and then by that time, do your second layer. But like you said, they dry quickly, so... Well, and I don't actually, you know what, that was me being experienced with stroke and coat. Um, these are different. These are like the brush Potter choice. Yeah. Amico painting on. Yeah. So I can't say for that, but, um, so I think that in my experience, these are lovely, by the way, these are lovely. Um, yeah, they're nice. Oh shit. Sorry. <laughs> Throwing your phone at me or what? Yeah. Um, if you want to go find her, it's S E R A P I P H I N A Ceramics. Um, Serafina. Yeah. So, in my experience, if you don't let it dry all the way, it's it's like an it's almost like they dry unevenly, in a way. So like. If a glaze is too thick, it, you know how, like, do you ever get glazes with, like, little crackles on it? On the oh, way yeah. On? Yeah. Do you rub those in or no? Depends on how significant the crackles are. If the cr- okay. if I rub it on it and it's going to flake off and fall off the pot, I'm not going to touch it. But regardless, it's probably going to end up looking like shit, so. <laughs> you just sounded like your dad so much right then. <laughs> um, um, uh, but if it's if it's subtle, I will, like, rub it in a little bit. Okay, so my in my experience, when a glaze is too thick, it'll do that. But also, if you if you overlay a glaze, like if you put another glaze on top of a, a glaze and it's not dry enough, it'll crackle like that. And that's when they start kind of like popping off the, the pots. Mm-hmm. And um, especially, like, I've experienced uh, like that. And then when you put them in a kiln... If they're too wet, that's when you get a lot of crawling, um, in my pots at least. So I always put a preheat on my glaze firings if I'm doing any glazes that could have any crawling. I always do a preheat for at least an hour just so the, that those... The crawling, for anybody that's not as familiar with what that looks like, what is a simple explanation of what that looks oh. like? Yeah, crawling is basically when there's, like, a bunch of glaze, and then there's a bare spot, like a bare clay spot. And, yeah, um, where it looks, like, kind of watered over, like it's, like, super thin glaze, but it's yeah. not, like... Crawling basically is, like, think of a glaze, like, drip crawling down a pot. That's what it kind of looks like. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, yeah, I, I would say, yes, you want to wait until it dries, um... But if you're, uh, I don't think you have to wait, like, I don't know how to answer this question. Because, like, you know, if you are in a rush, um, I, like, I've used a heat gun. I've used, I put it on a heater. I've put them on a heater before. I put them in the oven. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I've put pots in the oven and stuff. But um, One good thing is you can, with the mention of the oven, the hot stuff, like, if you're firing a kiln, maybe you plan it where you're firing a bisque kiln the yeah. day of or something, and you just happen to put the pots on top of the bisque kiln, either while yeah. it's firing or while it's cooling down or something. Yeah. It's going to speed up your drying pretty quick. So just oh, as you remember, paint it, you can just sit it on top of the kiln. Lindy showed us that hack, too. You know what? Um, you should consider this is because, uh, remember, she showed us that hack of doing a, a, a cup warmer, like a, like a teacup warmer. Or um, a candle warmer. Oh, yeah, that's what it's called, a candle warmer. And um, 
And so she turned it on and she can put her pots on that and then it'll dry them a little bit faster. So maybe if you like, like if you are consistently having an issue with them not drying fast enough, maybe like paint it, put it on the candle warmer and then paint the next one, put that one in like, you know, do kind of like a line Mm -hmm. that might work. Um, but yeah, I would, I mean, you do like, I had the best results when I glazed one day, the first layer and then glazed the next day, the second yeah Um, second layer so like you could also implement that where you're just doing and i know that those um brush glazes you know you have to have like three coats and shit like that but um yeah that gets kind of aggravating yeah but i mean maybe like i mentioned at the very beginning of this more pots like glazing more pots even if you're like switching brushes or something like yeah have make sure you have enough brushes so you're not like one brush for all the glazes and Mm mm-hmm do all your base coats like one layer of all of one glaze on five pots and then all of another glaze on five pots. So you have all of them and then you just go back to the first one and do, you know, just kind of assembly line it a little bit. Also, I think that if there's no crackly cracks, you know, it's fine. Yeah, like, just do keep a it test. Going. Do a test on one of them and see if you can do like one right after it, it gets unshiny, you know? Um, I think if I was painting, I probably wouldn't care about it completely drying, mm-hmm. to be honest. I'm sure it um, depends on how thick you're loading your brush up, too, right? Yeah. Man, I want to... If somebody knows where to get those fucking, like, floppy brushes that they <laughs> they use to, like... Um, the fan brushes, but they're, like, floppy fans that they use to, like, layer on the Amico glazes. Like, could you please tell me? Because those look so fucking satisfying. I have you know a fan you- brush, but it's, like, real thin, though. Yeah, exactly. These are like floppy fans. They're like thick floppy fans. And I want one. Hmm. So anyway, if you know where to get those, please let me know. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't worry. I would do some tests and see how quickly you can you can like redo the the glazing. Because um, if it's not crackling up, I don't think yeah. you should have an issue with it. Yeah, and don't, just make sure don't you're... like do it the most like precautious way possible and feel like you have to do it that way. Like Becca's saying, if you can like make four or five small cups that are like little, I don't know, two ounce cups or four ounce cups or something. And just try like very dramatic glaze applications and jot down what one you did and just see what the results are. Yeah. That might be. I'm sure she has to load those up. The ones that have the long drips on them. Yeah. She probably has to, you know, glaze those pretty thick. Yeah, to get the drip. Mm-hmm. And I also wonder, is there, like, more glaze, like, right above the drip? Or, like, you know, you know. Or maybe you, know? you just put an extra color or, like. Yeah, because I don't do glazes like that. But Four well, layers or something. And five usually layers. they're, like, painted in, like, a waving fashion. So I imagine at the bottom of the wave, that's where they drip. Mm-hmm. You know. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I have to do that with certain glazes still. I dip my glazes, but we've had some issues. Um, and that's something, you know, my assistant's having to learn as well with certain glazes. You can dip in the glaze. How long do you hold it? Um, and then just look. It's kind of an eye test. Like, you get an mm-hmm. eye for what looks dry enough and what doesn't look dry enough. And yeah. If you're going to ruin it, it's not worth rushing through and getting something complete. For me, at least, like, I'm, I'd rather just wait another day and say, yeah. okay, I didn't get these glazes because they didn't look right. They weren't dry enough, so. I kind of think, you know what's funny is that I kind of think of, like, um, glazing pots kind of like a budget. <laughs> like, a, it's like, kind of like my monthly budget is how I want to approach glazing and like everything in my studio. And we kind of talked about this two episodes ago, I think in like studio time, like efficiency and stuff. Yeah. But like, I, I should have said this then, but I'm just thinking about it now. Like right now I've been trying to work up to have over a thousand dollars in my account so that I can transfer it over to another account. So that by the time that that clears, it's the first of the month. And I've been, like, working up to that, right? So, like, I think of glazing kind of like a budget system where you're like, hey, you know, if I glazed 10 cups today 
and then like just one coat, you know, 10 cups today, left them to dry and then like threw 10 cups today and then trimmed 10 cups today and then uh, did the second coat of glazing tomorrow, then you would never have to worry about the drying times. You know, you would just, that would just be your process and you wouldn't have to like. You would just consistently do it little yeah, by little instead just, of waiting to yeah. the very end. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of people like leave their glazing till the end. But if, if you took like a month to just like work on being like in a consistent rhythm, um, I think that it would behoove you more. Uh, and I understand. I mean, I'm totally a glaze all at once type of person, but it might, uh, be less frustrating as far yeah. as like the drawing in your, in your, I don't think your results are bad by the way. Um, but it might improve your results. Um, just because you are kind of like methodically thinking about it little mm -hmm. by little. And you could probably spend 30 minutes late. You could just, there's no like ramp up time. You could just, as long as the pot's there and it's yeah. fixed, you could just spend 30 minutes glazing five pots or whatever. Yeah. And then be done with it after 30 minutes and you, you don't have to like wrap anything up. You just have to clean the brush right. out, but yeah, it's not. It's time that you can usually fit in around other things. Right, right. Yeah. So anyway, consider that also when you're doing it. But I do think that you should push yourself a little bit more. And um, don't worry as much about the rules. You know them, so now's the time to break them. So. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, te test is a good option. Yeah. Do it like sure. overly. It, like break the rules a lot and see what happens. And maybe do it in bowls instead of uh, shot glasses, like you said. There you yeah. go. Or use kiln cookies or something like that. Yeah. I like to do all my tests in bowls because then they won't drip onto a shelf. Yeah. The inside of bowls. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Cool. Great. That was good. Go team. <laughs> I feel like we always sometimes get questions about glazing and I don't have a lot of places to point them when we've talked about glazing. Maybe a couple episodes, but. I know it's because we just don't. It's like one of those. Glazing. It's one of those things. I feel like glazing is so like I feel like it's so basic in my studio that I just dip glazes. But there's got to be like habits that I formed that aren't necessarily natural to everybody that just comes into it and just doesn't know. But it's so specific to my glazes that. Yeah. Like it might not work for somebody else. Yeah, I know when I when like I. um started working at Graves Co. I did a few days of glazing, that maybe two, and then I was like, I'm not doing this again. Um, and uh, they measure the specific gravity of each glaze. Like, it's very, you know, Methodical. everything has to be perfect because they've had issues with their glazes and their customers were particularly picky and um, and stuff like that. So, like, and I'm just like, I can't fucking do this. Like, I've always just been like, okay, can you see the red on the mixer? Great. Like. <laughs> oh, like, did you mix it me. up enough that you don't yeah. see water on top? <laughs> yeah. Or like, because my mixer was red. So it was like, mix. Do you see the blade? Like, is it see-through enough to see the blade? It's too thin. Okay, great. <laughs> like, you know, but um, yeah, some people are super methodical and super like. They have a lot of things. Plus in a studio um, like that, you're the end of the line. You're the last person yes. that touches that before it goes in the kiln. So it's all you, boo. something happens like mm -hmm. you can really fuck something up with a glaze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my assistant's been like, oh, I hate that some of those didn't turn out. But it's like, hey, it's part of the process. Like you got to fuck some stuff up sometimes. You do. To figure out yeah. how to fix it. But then oh. you learn for the next time. But you've yeah. learned to not want to do glazing at the studio with her her studio because it's just too specific. No, so. it's not because of that. I just hate glazing and it hurts my back. And like it hurts okay. my foot, you know, like I can't stay. I can't. Um, yeah, uh, my ankle just can't do that. So, yeah, I think I need to at some point reconfigure that part of the studio. I, I still like your idea of the whole shelf system thing the lower shelving for my glazes because I oh, don't yeah. have a lot of room in there. Because mm -hmm. I got five-gallon buckets everywhere. But uh, Well, one weekend I could come up and we could just do it. 
There we go. Yeah. That'd be good. Mm-hmm. That would actually make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got one more glaze question. Yes. It says, I'm finding glaze combos I like, but if I ever wanted to make a batch of like 50 cups, brushing that shit would be an outlandish <laughs> amount of work. Can you clone recipes of bottle name brand glazes for dipping? That's from Black Tooth Pottery. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm, yes. I dread those people that have to paint on 50 cups. We admire you and your work. <laughs> but wow. if you have to paint, <laughs> you're stronger than us. Um, I was going to look up glazy.org and see if there was like copycat recipes. I would imagine that there must be copycat recipes. Yeah, or close enough recipes, you know? Right, like even right here it says investigating Amico's Dalmatian speckling agent. Like, I would say your first step should be going to glazy.org. Um, yes, there's definitely ways to make copycat recipes. Um, but also, like, don't be afraid to just find new recipes too you know like john Britt's book is mm-hmm. great for that and like you can find recipes that are very similar to what you're already using for sure um yeah you just so have you to be them. okay with it not being exactly the same especially when right. you start layering them and all that yeah but also i think there's glaze um facebook groups aren't there is there a glazy facebook mm-hmm. group there's yeah, there's Glaze Facebook groups, and that might be a good way, good place to like look to see if anybody, uh, like, if there is one that you're sp- specifically like really fond of, maybe like, um, being like, hey, I really really love this one. Oh, that's nice. Um, wow, wow, wow. I haven't been on Glaze in a while. Um, Anyway, like, hey, I'm really Mm -hmm. fond of, like, this glaze. Like, does anybody have any ideas of, you know, something similar or whatever? So, I mean, some of the companies do have dry mixes of 25 pounds or 10 pounds. Like, I get my Kentucky Mudworks glazes, you know, the the satin black and the Inferno red that I use. Mm -hmm. Um, Those I buy in 10-pound bags of dry mix. And you mix them just like you would if you made the recipe from raw materials yourself. You just mm. add water, mix it up, put it through a sieve twice, and it's dippable. So some companies, depending on where you're buying your glazes, I'm not sure what your glazes, the glazes you're using. And we could look right now, actually, and just see if we see uh, black tooth pottery. And see what kind of glazes you use. Um, can I say something that I just found just like randomly that I thought sure. was really interesting? So this this is a recipe on glazy.org. It's called Haggy. It's number seven four four four. Um, which is really pretty. And it's uh it's like a twice straw ash um glaze, I guess. Uh two two parts of straw ash and one part wood ash. And uh, it says, attention, this glaze jellifies and never stops absorbing water. Applying it can be a nightmare. Adding alcohol solves, solves the problem. 10, um, 10 to 90, like 10 percent, uh, what, 10 to 20 percent water plus 90 to 80 percent alcohol. Isn't that interesting? Oh, my gosh. That's nuts. That's crazy. Yeah, that's like that's like something that wants to be a solid and you're like making it be a liquid or something just to get it onto a pot like you would normally need to that's apply insane. it. That's insane. Like <laughs> Wow. <Yeah. laughs> so it looks like Blacktooth uses some western glazes and some Amico glazes. Amico does have a number of 25 pound bags that you can buy but Mm -hmm. they just had a product update announcement that they did so if 
you should go to their Instagram account. So depending on when you hear this, they actually just had an update of some products. They're going to discontinue some dipping glazes. Yeah. They, won't, they will no longer sell some of the 25 pound dry mixes. So if there's some that you're looking for and you want to make them dippable, I would yeah. say get them right now because I think they're stopping production in June or something like that. Right. And Andy, that one that is, um, that one that's like your second to last picture I have a glaze almost very similar to that. What's the date on it? Because you don't know um, when he's going to hear this. The date is February 14th. Well, it's the second to last one. So it's like the or second to first, I said, I guess. His second post ever is like a, a yeah. bluish green. I have a glaze that's very similar to that that you can have if you want. Um, Isaac's going to fucking kill me. When he hears this podcast, Isaac, they're not yours. They're mine. You haven't even used them, you asshole. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the last time I said, did you? <laughs> I feel like my relationship with Isaac is like Cardboard Tim's relationship with Brett Kern. Like, um, it's very like, uh, I think it's Brett Kern and Cardboard Tim. I don't think it's Brett Kern. Is I think you're Kern? thinking of somebody else. You're thinking of Paul Eide. No, I'm not. Paul Eide and... No, I'm not. And Cardboard Tim. Are you talking about the ones where they were, like, breaking each other's shit? No, I'm talking about the ones where they were making the margaritas out of cardboard. Okay, that might have been Brett Kern. I'm pretty sure that was Brett but, Kern. But Paul Eide was the one that they would trade pots and then they would, like, break them <laughs> in funny ways. That was so funny. Um, anyway, that's how I feel like our relationship is because we love each other like no other. And also, I love giving him shit so much. And he also loves giving me shit. And when I shared my white recipe on on Instagram, he was like, you, traitor. <laughs> he was like, that's my white. And I was like, no, it's not. It's the Internet's white. <laughs> I was like Isaac Four of my friends use that white It's a white <laughs> glaze It's not like you gave them your signature glaze oh, Isaac I love you <laughs> Um, Yeah Anyway uh, so He that, finally released his kitten video Did you see that? Yeah I see. I saw that Kittens So cute That, uh, um, that Amico Brent post I was talking about if you go mm -hmm. to their page, it's from April 20th. Hey, my birthday. Um, it's labeled product update. So look for that. If you are an Amico Brent glaze owner, you should look at that anyways, because there's changes they're doing to some of their glaze lines and some mm -hmm. under glazes and stuff they're getting rid of to help with their uh, supply issues. So everybody should listen to that part or look at that. For sure. See if you're affected. And hey, it might be a good chance to uh, work on trying to make your own glazes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I found the video of him making a cardboard cup and pouring a margarita in it. It's classic. Anyway, I'll send it to you. Um, okay. It's from August 1st of 2018. Tim sent him a cup that was oh actually gosh. a gosh. Yeah, it was actually a martini glass and it was supposed to be a margarita cup, but it was like so shallow and he was like, I can't even fit one ice cube in here. And then Brett made his own margarita glass out of cardboard <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and poured a margarita in it. It's so funny. Um anyway, yes, I think that yes, you can make clone recipes. <laughs> but like you said, Amico does have a lot of um, bottled recipes. And if you want to see what they look like before you use them, you can always just go to John the Potter. He, like, he's one of their reps. He's just Mako. Never mind. If you want to use Mako <laughs> and, and, and um, like any of his glazes, he says which ones they are, and he's one of their reps. <laughs> there is... There actually is an Amico Glaze Forum on Facebook mm -hmm. that is uh, 60,000 members strong. Amico Cone 5-6 Glaze Forum. 
there's a lot of different combos on there. So if you're an Amico person and you don't know about this, which you probably already do, and uh, there's a lot of combos on there. Because people are always like, oh, I use these glazes. What what do they look like? There's also a Kentucky Mudworks group of their glazes too. So Yeah. But yeah, look at some uh look at some options. I mean the I get the ten pound bags of Mudworks. I look out for whenever they have sales. Um if you like any of their glazes, definitely sign up for their mailing list because they have sales like six times a year or eight times a year or something. Yeah. Have them all the time. That's when I stock up on my glazes. So I always have at least twenty pounds of of their yeah. all each color that I have. And remember, there's no shame in buying glazes. Let's we have to put that in yeah. every time. You don't have there's to mix your own glazes. <laughs> zero shame in buying glazes. <laughs> it is just a little bit cheaper to make your own. <laughs> but buying them comes with a satisfactory guarantee. So yeah. You should still test regardless. Yeah, you should still test. How it's but... going to fit with your clay body, because that's also a factor that every single glaze company can't account for. For Yeah, correct. Yeah, for sure. So. Um... Yeah. What about the... Um... What else was I going to say? Hello, Charles. Yeah, I mean, I think there's def- there's definitely something different in the glazes that make them brushable versus dippable. CMC solution. Yeah. CMC gum solution. Um, Have you ever seen? I've seen some people take like the bottle of dip of brushable glaze and like pour it. Like I think I've seen Dante do that, and I don't know how. It seems like you would probably use more glaze than you should. No. Not necessarily. So, like with uh, stroke and coats, I pour in the glaze and then I'll brush it all around and then I'll brush the excess out into a bowl. Like I put it into a small um, crumb bowl that I have that has a little mm-hmm. spout and then pour it in, swish it all around and then pour it out again. Back and into the container it was in? Yeah, that way I don't have to do more than two coats because you're supposed to do three coats, but I always do two. I could probably get away with one though. So Honestly. you brush it on, you have a brush that's thick enough to like spread yeah. it really quickly and then just yeah. wipe off the excess quick. Yeah, I like brush it out, basically. Okay. Like there's always a little extra in the bottom and I turn it over and like brush it um, into a cup so that I'm not wasting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely an option. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. You know what I kind of want to do? I kind of want to make some slabs and do some actual like paintings. That would be really fun. I should do that. I'm going to do that. That's what uh, Amruta came over and did some of that uh, yeah. a couple years ago. She did she did yeah. some tests on some slabs because we were playing around with. Um, we were playing around with either her doing some on some of my cups or pots or something and then i wanted her to see because she's used to two-dimensional so like painting under glazes right. she needed to figure out what the underglaze consistency was how to paint them you obviously know how that process works and then like does glaze look yeah. good on top of it not glaze on top of it and then we played around with the newsprint version where you paint the foreground and then as you put layers you're painting the background and then did a transfer onto slab you should try that. Do you like do you like that kind of process? Yeah, it might be fun. It might be fun to like bring some of my glazes home and just paint. Like instead of going into the studio and painting, like I used to have all my like glazes in my studio and then paint or in my home and then I would paint, you know. What if you did could you do that process on newsprint and then cut out a shape of the gradient that you did on a newsprint or something? Or maybe you just do a big gradient and then you just cut shapes out of it and then you attach that onto a pot and peel it off. Does that work on bisque really well? I know it works on... I don't know if that would work on bisque. I also don't like the idea of it being like not perfect, but I do like that idea at the same time. But you would cut it out though, right? Yeah, you would cut it out, but you would also like you're not getting... Clean. Yeah, but the lines would be clean, but it wouldn't be like... You know, like, when I see those transfers, there's always, like, little bits that aren't there. It's, like, almost weathered. 
Um, it depends on how big of a section you're working on, I guess. Yeah. Maybe I should do some slabs. That might be fun. Yeah. Uh, oh, hey, At least I test have, it out, you know. I have something exciting. You have something exciting? Yeah, I just went on to our podcast and was looking at the reviews, and we have one from Wednesday. What? Yeah. How exciting is that? Okay. A new one. I'm gonna I've been waiting. It. I've been waiting for the day that we get more reviews. Um, wow. That is nice. I'm guessing it's a U.S. review because otherwise you probably wouldn't be able to see it. Um, I don't know if it's... I feel like that... It's a, it's a U.S. review. It's on... a U.S. review, but also I felt oh, like... Oh, there's I another one. The oh, no, that's from 2021. I was going to say there's another one from... Uh, uh, Canada, but that was 2021. Yeah. March of 20. Um, is it 20. bad that I don't follow our podcast? Like, is it bad that I'm not like a Jeez. a listener? I mean, probably. But <laughs> would we expect anything less from you, Becca? <laughs> I don't know. I I have to search it every time I look on my phone. Anyway, okay. Um, I'm gonna read the review. Okay, Why don't you says, just enjoy- follow it? Why don't you just follow it and turn off automatic downloads? So I guess it saves your space that. on your phone. There you go. But what what does it matter if I follow it? I don't know. Oh it my adds god, we one have more number one, on the scoreboard. We have like a one one star review. I wish they would have left a review. Anyway, um There's, oh, more, we have, than no, wait. There's, There's more than more one. There's more than one one star. Wow, we're disappointing that many people? Probably because of what we're doing right now. Is it we, or is it you, or is it me? I it's probably me. It's fine. Um. <laughs> hey, it's only in the U.S. I don't see any. I'm looking at the Canadian Apple podcast list. I don't see any one stars there. Canadians like us, apparently. We've There's only got seven ratings. ratings. And then we got four ratings in Great Britain. Wow. It looks like wow. three of them were... Uh, five star and one of them was a four star so (laughs) okay okay i'm reading i'm reading the review it says it's funny because recently on an episode i heard them mention they received a review that said something along the lines of i didn't love it at first but it grew on me and i totally agree at first i was looking for pottery podcasts to expand knowledge of the craft and the specific pottery content seemed to be the minority of the time per episode and the rest was just banter well now i love the banter it is see it is just <laughs> it is a great thing humanizing makers and getting to know people and how their personality lifestyle is translates um into their work. Oh, that's nice. We do banter. Nice. We do banter. Yeah. I, I mean more than half of this episode was banter, so That's true. I, I did mean, tell somebody this weekend I was like, give us like four episodes. Don't like don't like judge us on the first one. You know. Yeah. Do you tell do you tell people I, I don't know how people download it. I don't know if they normally download the very first episode we record or if people download the most recent. I don't know, because when I do podcasts, I always listen to the first first. The very you know? first. Yeah, really. Or like it depends very close on what to it the is. First. I like to grow with the podcast. I don't like to grow uh, against it. But you're really like in it, though. Like a podcast that's been around this many episodes for ours, I would. That's not episodic. It's just random. I feel like I would pick and choose based on the topic. Personally. Um, See, kind of. But also, like, we get better. And also, you, like, learn about their their lives, you know? Like, especially ours, we, like, talk about our life. And, like... Yeah, that's true. There's, like, there's, like, a progression, right? And also, I like to hear the beginnings of podcasts to see how terrible they are. Because ours was terrible. (laughs) And then, like, moving (laughs) up, you know? Um, to like a better, a better, yeah. like format and stuff, and you you feel like you know the people that are doing the podcast. Like I'm listening to that, but you know we talked about it like a couple weeks ago or last week. I'm listening to that, um, the cult one, the cult podcast, and I, I listened, also- I listened to like six of those episodes this weekend, and it got under my skin a little bit at the beginning, and then I just couldn't step away, and I just kept listening to a few more, and I'm like. They're still under my skin a little bit, but I wish they were longer. I feel like it's just like entertainment, but yeah, I feel like it's just like so surface level shit. You know, it's like a 30 minute podcast and it was like 
come on, you could be asking more interesting questions, like if it was like an hour, you know? But yeah. and and so I feel like we give that time. I don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, you just like <laughs> learn and listen and live with the people. <laughs> you just, you know. <laughs> And plus, if you're going to listen to podcasts in your studio while you're working, like, just imagine how many podcasts you can get through in a week if you're in your studio for, like, six hours. Oh, yeah. That's a fuck ton. So, like, you could start at the beginning and just move on up. Yeah. I mean, maybe up. maybe with something like that that's been around so long and it's already, like, in an area that I'm familiar with and I'm, yeah. that I enjoy, maybe I would listen to the first to see like what their intentions are. Cause usually they yeah. kind of go into like what they're doing this for. And then I'd probably pick one based on the topic and see like, okay, this is something I care about. Let's see what their take is on this thing. But I also, yes. And I then also, I might go back and be like, all right, I like it enough. Let's start at the beginning. But yeah, I also understand like the whole concept of like, I know there's some people that just skip the first part of our podcast completely. They're like, okay, 25 minutes in, we'll start there. Um, like they already know us and they don't need to hear about our lives and do you they want to do though. I don't no, know. I know they do because they've told me like some people tell me, I'm not going to tell you who it is, um, here, but I mean, um, I know who it is, but you don't know who it is. I know one. Okay, fine. What letter does it start with? A J? No. Okay. <laughs> yes. Josh only listens to part. He doesn't listen to the beginning. I, yeah, but that's because he like really knows us, but I'm saying like, there's other people that don't listen, <laughs> but like, I could totally understand if you had, if you had any interest in pottery, like, or you knew about pottery, like <laughs> picking and choosing topics for sure. Like if I was list, if I, <laughs> I wouldn't, first of all, I you would never would, listen to our podcast. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> <laughs> we know this about you, Becca. I know, but that's why I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I would never. And I don't listen to, and don't get me wrong. I you am don't listen all... to any other pottery podcast, too, either. <laughs> I don't listen to any other pottery podcast, either. So it's across the board. <laughs> I do not discriminate. <laughs> uh, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man <laughs> I love it you know what I'm... I did see I have seen a couple more new ones though I actually discovered a, a brand new one I haven't listened to it but um, it was another pottery one I think wasn't it was... there like a company that was releasing like six podcasts or something yeah, it was, it was Ceramics the, Network or something. The Brickyard Network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they've got a, quite a few. Yeah. I mean, it looks like Tales of the Red Clay Ramblers technically under that umbrella. Oh, really? I mean, that's a long-lasting podcast. Yeah. I Very... almost wonder if they, like, um, bought them or something, or, like, exclusive deal or something, you know. Because, I mean, that's oh, what yeah. for Flux Sake is under. That's what trade yeah. secret is under clay and color. There's a new one called the shot collars. Uh, the kiln sitters. Uh -huh. That's clever. Yeah. I think these are a lot. It must be part of like. I don't know. I want to say like podcast network, but probably not. It's probably like a education collective or something. And then they. Yeah, it's kind of like an academic focused, I think, but. I don't know enough yeah, yeah, about yeah. it. But yeah, there's a um, few newer ones that are just like independent artists that are talking with people. Yeah. Um, that I started, uh, one of them I started listening to, which is actually probably a listener to this podcast that was pretty funny. It was called Batty Bitches. Batty Bitches. Oh, I think I heard of that. That's, um, oh, she paints I bats. I think she's, it's bat ceramics. Yeah, it's bat ceramics. Yeah, that's who it is. She's yeah. funny. Brooke. Mm-hmm. Baddie bitches. Baddie bitches. That's clever. I still think... I might be biased, but I think that we have the best name. 
for a podcast. Yes, I agree. When I when people I always tell laugh people, whenever I tell people. Yeah. yeah, when I tell people our name, they're like, "That's fucking clever," and I'm like, "I know, <laughs> we're fucking clever." <laughs> Oh, I had a dream the other night that I won $97 million in a, um, in a, the lottery, but it was like shared with somebody else. And I only asked for 10. Um, <laughs> and then I did the math today. And if I had $10 million and retired at the age of 32, um, like if I had one year of, of, of investments in that, uh, I would make four hundred and thirty three thousand dollars a year just off of if you had residual. one year of investments. So if I had an eight percent return on ten million dollars mm-hmm. for one year and then retired, um, I could make okay. just because that's the way I did it. Maybe don't I, choose this year, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. I was telling <laughs> I was looking at my stocks and I was like, holy shit, I've lost like a thousand dollars in the last month. And, um, which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, but I'm like, I should start buying. I need to actually transfer a bunch to buy. Or um, should you wait until it goes down significantly and then buy? Um, VTSAX has gone down $15 in the last, like, and that's an index fund that only goes up like five bucks a year. Hmm. There you go. Anyway. You got some spare dollars. Yeah. Oh, but I would be able to live off of four hundred and thirty three thousand dollars a year. I think that's plenty <laughs> <laughs> for somebody that can literally live on like twelve thousand dollars when you don't even <laughs> when you didn't even like <laughs> like that was twenty thousand dollars. Thank you very much. I do not want to put myself in a twelve thousand dollar. That makes me seem like a superhero, which I am not. <laughs> I thought it was because the business o- like paid for part of it so that you actually only lived on twelve thousand dollars or something. I think it was twenty. Okay. Um, no, it was twenty eight thousand dollars, and my rent was twelve hundred dollars. Okay. Or my mortgage was. I don't know. No, it was twenty thousand. I don't know. It was something small. But. Whew. Yeah. So I officially uh, started my new role today. <gasps> you did? Well, That's not exciting. like role, but I've been kind of straddling the two roles lately anyways. But officially, like in our HR system, I officially started under my new manager and stuff and got my That's pay good. increase and all that good stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Hurrah. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> it's been nice. There's already been a shift of like how I spend my time during the work day and it's it's different but it's it's more enjoyable nice 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 yeah i'm i'm gonna be honest like last week we kind of talked about it but last week i went in to work at 4 p.m no at 6 p.m every day and work till 10 mm-hmm. and wow it was nice it was nice like working by myself so nobody was like distracting me at all mm-hmm. And, um, and just like, did you still get the alone? same amount of throughput in four hours that you would in eight hours? Well, I always work for four hours, but oh, like I don't work eight hours working time. Yeah. I, but I would like one of the days only work for two and a half hours. Like I got everything I needed to be done in two and a half. Is your body in a better state to be working between six and 10 versus the other time of day? Mm, I don't think my body is, but my mind is for sure. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but it was nice. Okay. Because you're not as well rested. Like, it seems like you'd be more well rested on those days, right? No, it was mostly that I just didn't have anybody around me. Oh, okay. I meant your body as in physically, like that you've done a whole day, whatever, until six o'clock. Oh, I was sleeping until six o'clock, so no. Oh, <laughs> it kind of fucked my whole sleeping schedule, but it's okay. fine. It was, yeah. I would like get up at ten and like eat some food and then go back to sleep until like four. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> okay. But I was getting off of being in COVID, so I was still really tired. 
Yeah. You know. Are so. you? I'm guessing you're all good now. It's been yeah a couple of weeks out since. Yeah, since yeah, yeah. Then, like so. I was able to do the show and everything. Did you see? I got an air plant. I named him Eric. I did. I thought somebody else gave it to you and named it Eric. No, I named him Eric, but I did get it from Nick. Nice. Yeah. I also got another plant and named her Ruby. She's the rubber plant. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and for those wondering, Eric is spelled A I R I C K. Eric. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric. Eric. My pet goldfish, Eric. Um, <laughs> we just got a bunch of airplanes for this. Sh- for the show a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I saw quite a few. Nice. It's pretty nice. People like that. Uh, if it was a little warmer, people would have liked it a little more. But, hey, I was happy with it. When's when's the... Uh, um, yeah, we need to talk about that. The we need to mention it to people if they want to come see us. Uh, June 11th. If you want to come see beautiful Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> and... Um, at my parents' residence. Deidre Durbin's... Kentucky. Wonderfully manicured back lawn. <laughs> Can't forget Carlos Durbin. He's, oh, yes. And Carlos. He's, just, he's important here. He is because he mows the lawn shirtless, as I found out. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> he will not be shirtless at the event. He won't. But mm, he may. <laughs> you never know. Carl's, Carl's a, he's a wild hair. <laughs> if you haven't gathered that Carl... Uh, Carl, uh, Ryan's dad, who we call Carlos, is um, completely different than Ryan. <laughs> like, 155% different. So, yes. <laughs> because I won't I won't go shirtless in the yard? <laughs> you won't even go shirtless? Yeah, yeah, no, seriously. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just different than you. He's so, like... I don't know why he's so different. <laughs> anyway, um, Backyard Craft Show is um, Saturday, June Saturday. 11th from June 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yes. And in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, there's, Kentucky. There's an event on Facebook. Yes. That would be our main form of advertising. If you're within range, you can come see us. Maybe two hour drive. I don't know. Maybe will there Lexington. be free snow cones again this year? Not free, but I mean, snow cones will be there. They gave us free snow cones last year. He gave you free ones? Yeah, the first like 20 were free. Oh, really? Okay. So I, went, I don't know that cone. I got a free one, but. You were late. I think Rachel got one for me. I don't know. We'll have snow cones there. We'll have tunes with Trent there. This guy was playing all kinds of instruments. It was pretty, he was a character. I liked him. He was a character. I liked him. Yeah. We should sell hot dogs. Maybe I should take red vines like I did when I was in like high school and sell red vine for 25 cents. Ooh, or we could sell- no, that that is conflict of interest with the snow cones. Never mind. Um, Popsicles. <laughs> I was thinking it might be fun to sell otter pops. <laughs> you know Deech is just gonna be out there giving out popsicles like left and right. <laughs> I know. Oh, don't worry about paying, it's fine. She's gonna be giving out some ice cream sandwiches and shit. <laughs> oh, Deech makes some solid ice cream sandwiches. Um, and I'm going to have a real tent this year. Are instead you? Instead of just being a Wait, table you didn't under even, the tree. Yeah, you didn't even put your stuff under a tent last year. You just had the tables. You didn't let me. I remember I, I brought my two tents both your for tents, other right? people. Yeah. That's right. I didn't even get a tent last year. I didn't even have the option. <laughs> well, Trent, mus- musician guy is going to have his own tent this year. So you can have... Oh. Nice. Yeah. Well, and Rachel's not going to do a tent, so. Yeah, she's going to have a few things with her dad, her dad's booth. Yeah. So we're going to have, hit, her dad has, uh, Keevan has some vintage house decor stuff. We're going to yeah. have painting there. We're going to have a leather person there. Oh, yay. Um, We're going to have, let me go over to the thing, some mixed media stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Um, And is Kylie coming again? Kylie is coming. That's our. That's another potter. We also so have three potters. Homebody ceramics. That oh, is so a newer four potter. Potters. Four okay. potters. That's a newer potter that was in Louisville. It was asking me some questions. I think she came last year, and I was like, "Hey, I see you sell some pottery. Do you want to try it out?" 
Oh, yeah, this is a great show to just try out. It's not guaranteed that you sell anything, but, like, you know, it's still fun. <laughs> we have Matt again. He does the woodworking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, he does, like, mm-hmm. wood decor stuff. We've got Chef jewelry. Jewelry. jewelry and, yeah. I think that's it. Is um. There's also a photographer going to be there that is, I think she's going to sell prints and stuff. That's uh, Rachel's cousin. Okay. She's, like, a professional photographer. Is D Harp's design going to be there? Yep. That's the mixed okay. media one I mentioned. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then, um, lots Darty. of and stuff. Darty, yeah. Um, fun, fun, fun. That'll be fun. Me and Emeruta last year, just like we're just a two peas in a pod. <laughs> two peas in a pod. And two peas Matash in a pod. came too. They always come the day before and they stay. So that was yeah. a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll probably come the day before as well. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll make some. Uh, maybe I'll make some little canvases and give uh, Imruta a run for her money. You know, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> competition. Yeah, shmer, shmer, shmer. So anyway, yep. Um, that should be fun. Yes. Well, this has been a this has been an off brand podcast. Hey. If hey, if you didn't ask me, normally you'd be like, "Do you want to just do a shoot the shit episode?" And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa. you're not listening to this episode. We need to do something for the people here. <laughs> we can't just shoot the shit for an hour and a half. It's even true. though we shot the shit for about forty five minutes of this, but yeah, maybe like an hour <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning and the end." <laughs> If you okay, want, good hour. if you want to give us a one star review, just like message us personally. Just don't put it on Apple Podcast, okay? I mean, wouldn't you want to read a one star review though? I would want to read a one star review. I'm not gonna, be, I'm not gonna lie. For everybody but to I, see, like, I don't know that a one star review would make it this far. Um, they would get this far in the episode to hear yeah. us mention that we want to hear it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Imagine that if one's... somebody just stumbled upon us and listened to this episode first. Fuck, that would suck. I'm so sorry. Go back and listen like a th- four more episodes ago. Listen to one of our Q&A episodes or something where we have a lot of valuable information. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Art um, show q and I feel like I tell people that one all the time. 86 and 87. Hey, what's 86? this art show? How do you find art shows? How do you set up your tent? How much do you take? 86 and 87. 86 and 87. <laughs> And ooh, we should have a little teaser too next week. Um, next week we have a really fun guest that's gonna be on. Yes. We won't tell you who it is. It is an MDL of ours. But she has a cat who also catches treats. Yes, she does. Yes. She has multiple cats. Only one catches treats though. Just like you. I don't, have three, I don't have three cats, but. That's true. Anyway, she's going to be on and we're very excited. Away. Yes. Um, do we have anything else to say? I don't think so. Here's we our outro. Said... Our outro. <laughs> somebody mentioned about our outro. They thought it was a gimmick. They thought we just made that shit up. Oh, no, no, no. That was straight up me sitting in a bed in a hotel room. Like, I was so excited to say, like, what we had, and then I completely forgot. Yeah, that was and on we our were, trip. Yeah. So you hear me shouting in the background. That was, like, that was not scripted. That was, that was not one scripted. off. We're not re-recording this. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. has been our outro since, I don't know when, <laughs> probably 100 episodes ago. And if, if, there's, ago. if nothing else... If nothing else, it describes our our um our relationship perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, All right. it does. Anyway, uh, bye. Thanks everybody for listening. Bye. <laughs>